Hey guys, it's Justin with the Med School Boys. I'm currently in my second year of medical school here at Texas A&M, and I also have an MBA from Mays Business School. If you're new to the channel, drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notifications to tune in on all things MSB. Without further ado, let's talk about getting an MBA with your MD. So you are considering getting an MBA in conjunction with your MD. If you are, you have probably done a quick Google search to try and help guide such a big decision. You'll find various results, some that are pretty surface level and others that do a great job tackling one or two topics related to getting an MBA with your MD. For the most part, however, majority of the videos on MD MBAs are based on anecdotal advice and not on tangible evidence. Hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be able to touch on a majority of the questions that I've gotten from prospective students, as well as a framework to help guide you in making such an important decision. I do believe that this video is one of the most comprehensive dives into MD MBA programs, but there will inevitably be gaps either due to the fact that a new MD MBA program with a new structure came out after the making of this video, or because there are some questions that are very application specific, but feel free to reach out to the Med School Boys account on Instagram or my personal Instagram, both linked in the description, and hopefully I'll be able to help dive in and get your questions answered. I also want to mention that there are also some DO MBA programs and the advice in this video could easily apply to those programs as well. I do want to mention that this video briefly touches on careers you could have with an MBA in conjunction with your MD, but this topic definitely warrants a video of its own since we could spend a lot more time diving into each one. So for the uninitiated, an MBA stands for a Master's in Business Administration. The MBA curriculum has a large variety of courses, some mandatory, some elective, that allow you to sample various aspects of business. Majority of the MD MBA programs are primarily general MBAs with some integration of medicine and healthcare. But there are a couple of programs out there that are completely integrated with the medical school curriculum and have a lot more healthcare and medical involvement. But MD MBA programs were not always this popular. Around 1995, there were six MD MBA programs. Currently, there are about 65 to 75 MBA programs in the United States. That means that roughly 50% of the MD programs in the United States have an affiliated MBA program. This rise is largely due to the increasing demand for professionals who understand the medical and business side of healthcare. Part of what makes MD MBA students so valuable is the wide scope of information they are exposed to during their MBA. If business degrees were different foods, getting an MBA is like visiting a food court. You get to sample a variety of courses from different business concentrations like accounting, finance, supply chain, data analytics, marketing, and management, just to name a few. There are a variety of careers that one could pursue with an MBA on top of their MD. Examples of this include clinical roles, investment banking, finance, hospital provider administration. You could work in biotech, devices, pharmaceuticals, and even entrepreneurship. If you guys are interested, I can definitely set up some interviews with MD MBAs currently working in these various spaces. Just leave a comment if you have someone in mind or want to learn more about one of these industries. Now that you know what an MBA is, let's talk about the process of getting into an MD MBA program. Some MD MBA program applications are immediately made after getting admitted to the partnered medical school, while others are made during your second or third year of medical school. Some combined MD MBA programs will take your MCAT score and you won't have to take the GMAT or the GRE, while others will require an additional graduate exam on top of the MCAT. It's largely a case by case basis. So I would definitely reach out to the program that you're interested in and double check. It may also be possible that you can take the GRE or the GMAT to strengthen your application and try to beat the average of the institution that you are interested in applying to and possibly secure some additional scholarship while you're at it. MD MBA programs also vary in structure. Generally, MD MBA programs take five years to complete and have three semesters worth of MBA curriculum, generally a fall, spring, and summer. Some programs allow you to take the MBA portion of your MD MBA before your first year of medical school. Other programs make you take a gap year or a leave of absence between either your second or third year. And other programs have a hybrid model where you take some courses in a gap year and some during your time in the medical school. There are also one or two programs that offer an MD and an MBA in your four year timeline, but currently these are pretty rare. 
These varying program structures result in you getting your MBA at various times in your MD MBA journey. Some will get their MBA before they start medical school, and some will get their MBA degree at the same time that they graduate medical school. So let's take a look at a graphical representation to help us really understand the variety in timeline between the various students. The first one is getting an MBA before you start medical school. This was the track that I took. The best part about this is that you don't have to take a break in your medical education and get to take all of your newfound business acumen with you during your four years of medical school. However, this comes at the cost of possibly little to no business experience going in, unless you worked between your undergrad and your MBA, as well as forgetting a lot of that valuable information if you don't actively utilize it during your four years of medicine. Now let's say that Aaron or Surya from the med school boys wanted to get an MBA after they started medical school. This is the second option where you get your MBA between your second and third year or between your third and fourth year. These are essentially the same as far as experience is concerned. The only difference would depend on the curriculum of your school, where you may have started doing rotations in the hospital, which will bring invaluable experience that you will be able to share with your fellow MBA classmates. The third option is getting your MBA after medical school during your residency. Let's say Harsh from the med school boys decides to wait. He could seek out residency programs that integrate the MBA into their residency curriculum, while others will make you obtain it through courses taken during nights and weekends. Our final option is the integrated medical school model. Let's use Alan from the med school boys for this example. With this integrated model, Alan could get his MBA in a four year timeline, all while finishing his MD. However, there are only a handful number of programs that currently offer this option. A common question that prospective applicants ask is the ability to do an internship. A standard practice during MBA programs is participating in an internship to apply some of the lessons learned in the classroom while simultaneously securing a job for when you graduate from your MBA. This is largely based on your MD MBA program structure. Normally, MBA students have three semesters of coursework with an internship between their second and third semester during the summer. However, majority of the MD MBA programs are condensed and students finish their MBA third semester during that summer, leaving little time for an internship. Some integrated curriculums, however, spread out that summer coursework during a semester in medical school, allowing you to pursue an internship instead. So let's talk about the benefits of getting an MBA. One benefit of an MBA is an increased tolerance to ambiguity. A study in 2001 by Dr. Windsor Sherrill surveyed six MD MBA programs and found that MD MBA students exhibit a higher tolerance of ambiguity than traditional medical students, which could prove to be crucial in roles where an individual is a physician executive. Another benefit of an MBA is that it has positive impacts in relation to residency programs. In a study by Dr. Jay Patel in 2017, he used a Likert scale and found that residency directors who have worked with residents with MBAs had positive opinions of them and that programs with higher number of faculty with MBAs correlated with a greater number of residents with MBAs in that program. The MD MBA also provides various professional benefits. A study done in 2015 by Dr. Mitesh Patel and colleagues surveyed 148 MD MBA graduates and found that survey responders believe that the MBA on top of their MD provided benefits of career acceleration, professional flexibility, and credibility in multidisciplinary domains. This is something that I hope to dive into further in a future video. Lastly, there are opportunities for higher starting salaries. Dr. Joshua Goldman surveyed 55 MD MBAs from 2003 to 2009 and found that on average, their starting salaries were $292,500. This figure is probably higher now considering a rise in physician salaries and economic inflation. This increase in starting salary could offset the income lost by delaying residency and your eventual income as a physician. There are also some drawbacks to getting an MBA. The first drawback of an MBA is the cost. As of 2022, the average cost of an MBA is $66,300, with some programs being as low as $17,000 and as high as $161,810. The second drawback is a loss of income for the delayed entrance into medical school or work. By taking a gap year, you are also delaying entrance into your occupation and salary. 
Medscape's 2022 report stated that the average primary care physician makes $260,000 and the average specialist makes $368,000. Regardless of what type of residency you end up pursuing, this is a sizable opportunity cost. Another possible drawback that some individuals with an MD-MBA will encounter is that the MD-MBA provides a pigeonhole or limits business career options, and that the MBA was sometimes seen as a distraction from their medical career. This was the sentiment that some respondents in Dr. Mitesh Patel's and colleagues shared in their 2015 study. These are certainly not all the pros and cons out there, but they give us some structure in making the decision. There are also some pros and cons that are pretty abstract and not supported by the literature out there, but should certainly be considered in the making of this decision. There's also a lot of variability in the pros and cons based on every individual. For example, some people might list the security blanket of an additional degree as valuable, but others who are more confident in their love and commitment to medicine may not see it the same way. Either way, making the decision of getting an MBA with your MD is definitely a big one. Although you may not have the answer by the end of this video, I hope that the information discussed in this one can help guide your choice and give you some tangible evidence for or against your eventual decision. I've left a full list of the articles and publications that I used in this video or found useful when I was making the decision, in case you want to dive deeper before you make the choice yourself. If you want to start a conversation about your personal journey and getting an MBA, hit us up on Instagram or hit me up on my personal Instagram and I'll definitely get to your question. I'm hoping to engage with some physicians with MD MBAs in the future to help show all the things that one can do with the additional degree. If you know someone who is doing something cool with their MBA, send them my way. I would love to hear their story and ask them some questions, which I can hopefully share with all of you. This was Jesswin with the Med School Boys. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.